Hello and thank you for watching. This is Jennifer Bowman with Olympia Piano and this is going to be video one in a 30-day series on Chopin's Nocturne in C-sharp minor. And I'm not going to call this a challenge. I'm going to call it a 30-day overview of this piece. I'm going to give you a basic overview with some fingering, some pedaling, some voicing, so you can get started on this piece in an accurate fashion. It's not going to be super duper in detail. I'm not comparing a bunch of versions. I'm going to use my version from so long ago, the Chopin Nocturne's Henley edition. I'm going to show you my fingering that I use and if there's any other very recommended fingerings, but I'm not gonna do a comparison of 10 versions of this piece. And I will also lead you towards other videos I have of this piece. I have three videos on this piece that are quite detailed, so I will refer you to those videos during the piece when applicable. One of the videos is trills, one of the videos is rhythm, and one of the videos is scales at the end. So we're gonna just get started. Right away, there's something to point out. So my measure one is written kind of as two measures. There's actually eight beats right here. So in some versions, there might be a measure line right here. So this is actually gonna count as two measures, plus then there's a repeat. So just be mindful of that. This will basically be measures one and two. Then we'll start tomorrow with three and four and so forth. All right, so let's go through first. We'll go through the right hand notes. We've got four sharps and we're gonna use the harmonic minor. So we have that major five chord. So C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B sharp, which is on the key of C, and then C sharp. So fingering for the first measure is gonna be one, two, five. Then your third finger is going to go to that G sharp. Thumb goes down to C sharp and pinky on B. Notice that C sharp on the bottom has a stem that's going down and these stems are going up. That means we're going to hold this C sharp while we switch these notes from three, five to two, four. And then again, we have that same C sharp with a stem going down. It looks different here because of where it lands rhythmically. You're going to hold that for two top chords as well. You can do this two ways. You can do one, two, four, then one, two, three for the E, F double sharp. That's what that little X is. And then hold that F double sharp while you pivot to the next chord, B sharp, D sharp, G sharp. Or you can do one, two, four, one, three, four, and then end up with one, two, five. You'll have to see what works best for your hand. That's the fingering for the right hand. Left hand's gonna be five, move up, two, one, two, four, five, or two, three, four. See what feels best to you. And now let's do that together. Be very observant of the rest, the eighth rest, and then the half rest at the end, okay? So we have one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And then you would repeat. So really make sure that you do that half rest at the end of that measure. I've heard this so many times where performers just ignore that and go on, but this music is setting the stage for the whole piece. So. It's as if the curtains are coming up. So just really be rhythmically correct here. Okay, so now let's talk about two more things. Item one is going to be voicing and dynamics. And as I start talking about dynamics and things, know that there's thousands of interpretations. So this is just the one that I do, which I think works really well, all right? I think it's really nice to grow to that F double sharp. So just slightly. Here's the loudest point, and then it just releases a little bit, a little softer. That's the dynamics that I would suggest. And then secondly, I would suggest that you try to voice, which means play the note on the top the loudest. So we can accomplish that in one hand by slightly shifting our hand, the weight of our hand from this straight on position little bit to the right, so the weight of my arm is going in to the top note, all right? So that sounds like this. Three and four. I like
like to do the second one with a soft pedal. I know that there's many people that have quite an opinion about the soft pedal. I just happen to like it. I like to have a contrast between a little bit louder, a little bit softer. You can also do it with no soft pedal for the second time. But when there's a repeat in the music, that always tells me as a performer, as an interpreter, do it a little bit differently. Now we're gonna just take a very quick side view of the hands so you can see how they roll through the chords. The final thing I am going to talk about for this measure is the pedal. You are basically going to pedal each note, releasing the pedals on the rest. And I do have a video on pedaling that's a little more in detail, which I'll link up above or also in the description notes. We're gonna do pedal, move, pedal, pedal, off, pedal, 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 three, and four, and. In this side view, I'd like you to just see the timing of the pedal. So we're going to have it one and off, pedal, pedal, and off, pedal, 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 three, and four. And if you want to do the soft pedal, you put in Andre the rest. comes off and you get ready for the next measure. Okay, so I think I've covered all of the elements for this intro. Be thinking about what your emotion is. What are you trying to do as you introduce this piece? The final thought I wanna leave you with is be aware of what your tempo is gonna be for the next part. How fast are these eighth notes gonna be for you? because that's the tempo you want to take. One and two, and three and four, and one and two and three and four and. All right, thank you for watching. I will look forward to seeing you on day two where we are going to cover measures three and four. Please share, subscribe, donate via PayPal to my channel. This is going to be a fun project and I look forward to your comments and questions. I also love to know where you're from, so please leave that for me in the comments. And as always, thank you for watching.